all these words, all these four <laughs> words to me that I don't even understand. Like, you know what I mean? Like things yep. that I come home. I was like, oh, I learned about this today or that. They were like, oh, like, you know, it's so like there was the three of us having a conversation. It was like the first time I really felt like I kind of understood. I mean, I, 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 you know, I've been in meetings before, but it was the first time I was like, oh, my God, like, these words actually might make sense to me. Today. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like, oh, like I might actually understand what this means. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they definitely had high expectations. They, they wanted me to have fun and learn as much mm-hmm. as possible. So um, it was definitely funny coming home and like, you know, again, they would say stuff that I'd be like, Wait, I think I I think I heard that in the meeting today. I think I might actually know what that means. And, then, you know, <laughs> so there's no secret that we all have to step out of our comfort zone. For me personally, working in medicine was stepping out of my comfort zone. And my guest today had to do the same thing. He came to my job at Johns Hopkins as an intern in our department. And just like myself, a young black man who loves sports with a desire to work in sports communications, Andrew Golden, my guest, excel at Johns Hopkins as a media relations intern and since then has continued to excel in the sports world. I'm excited to bring him on today one because I'm proud of his work he's a mentee of mine and a little brother but also so he can share how his journey included him stepping out of his comfort zone a bit just to set him up for great success. So ladies and gentlemen here is my conversation with Andrew Golden. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, I'm bringing on somebody that I admire. He's a little brother of mine. But when I tell you that this young man's journey has been remarkable and he's just getting started, um, you know, he's somebody that I, you know, I had the pleasure of working with for a summer the last great summer that we had in this world, in my opinion. And I'm excited to bring him on the show today. He's fresh out of college, fresh out of the great University of Northwestern University. He's an aspiring, no, he's no longer inspiring. He is a journalist. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only Andrew Golden. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Thanks for having me on. I, I, I've been waiting to come on this podcast for a year, man. I'm glad I finally got to be on here, man. Oh, <laughs> man. Yo, you should have been saying something. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, he was definitely somebody that I was definitely going to be hitting up soon, man. Um, you know, I, I've been watching your journey. It's funny because we were supposed to meet three years prior, but apparently you didn't follow up. <laughs> Look, look I, I, I still think that story is fully true. Look, I don't know. <laughs> look, look, my, my, my mom made that up. I don't know what I don't know what she was talking about. But yeah, maybe it should have happened earlier. But I'm glad it happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as as uh, look, my wife um, was late to our wedding and um, you know, I'm standing at the altar waiting and the minister said, well, I know she wants to marry you. Delay is not denied. So, <laughs> uh, you know, that's what it is. You know, shout out to your mom. The one, the only Dr. Sharita Golden, um, you know, she's a phenomenal person. I'm always going to uh, put, put her over. She's always great, you know, uh, a true blessing in this world. Of course, you know, she's yeah. your mom, but then yeah. it's also she's your mom. So it's like, <laughs> but, you know, i um, happy that, you know, she encouraged you to take the internship at Johns Hopkins, which is where we met. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, I mean, you, you know, I don't know a lot about medicine. I mean, my parents have, you know, medicine is their whole life. Me, me, medicine, <laughs> you know, medicine's their whole life. Um, and but for me, it wasn't something I was interested in. But you know, my mom kind of told me that, you know, to have an open mind and take advantage of any opportunity that comes my way and make the most of it and learn as much as I can. I came there and met you and you knew sports, so I knew I could trust you pretty early <laughs> on. <And> then, <laughs> but then from there, you know, I, I learned, you know, you, you taught me a lot about, you know, um, audio, pod, podcasting, video, all these multimedia things that I really hadn't. I learned a little bit in college, but to have that real, that real like hands-on experience I never had was super beneficial for me. So it ended up being a great experience for me. You know, it wasn't, you know, I love to write, but, but I I needed to learn other things and and grow in that way. And, you know, everywhere that I've 
gone since I've learned and grown in that way. But um, but the multimedia aspect was something I really needed. So, you know, I, I was glad I had the experience. Yeah, man. You know, like I said, I was glad you came. Uh, just call it for what it is. You know, we had another black male in the, in the office, you know. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't mm-hmm. too many of us uh, at the time. You know, shout out to the big brother, Leo. Um, he was there. Um, and you may have had a couple other people. I think Kent was there at the time, you know, but, you know, having somebody you can relate to, you know, from the sports side, I know exactly how you felt. One, like I said, when I found out that you was in the sports really heavy, I was like, okay, cool. Now I'm having a second person. Shout out to the big bro, Patrick Smith, you know, Patrick. I knew you were, I knew you were going to say his name. I knew you were going to say Patrick. I love Patrick. Yeah, man. You know, and, and, and it's always fun that, you know, Patrick will, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. Patrick will big you up in our meetings to this day you know when you do something really cool you know and and shout out to marin and dr audrey wong you know our the greatest manager duo ever that i've ever seen ever had the pleasure of working under you know um they really allow you and when i say use it as everybody you know they really allow you to be yourself right and take what you learn. Like I come in with a sports background and I applied the sports side to medicine. You feel me? So that was the cool thing, you know, and and that was the one thing that I wanted you to be able to come in and do is come in, use what you learn in sports and apply it to medicine and make yourself versatile. And man, I mean, you just crushed it. Um, The the one one thing I'll say about Marin and Audrey too, is like, they'll they'll make sure to um, make you go outside your comfort zone. Like eat, like like they, they eat, they won't do it in a way where it's like they're going to throw you out there with no help, but they're going to give you the advice and give you the tools to succeed. But they also want you to try new things, which I really appreciate during that internship. It was like, Marin was like, can you help me out with this? And I was like, ah, oh. she's like, no, you got it. Like, here's what we're going to do. Like, here's a rundown. And then, you know, you're going to go execute and do, and do it. And, you know, so I, you know, I'm, I'll be forever grateful for the two, the two of them. Um, whenever, whenever mom's on the call with, <laughs> with Marin, I always like running and say hi to her before I leave, you know, like in the other room. So, I mean, that, that's not really professional, but you know, yeah, no, I'll always be grateful for them. For I mean, you, you know, at this point, like I said, we built the family, you know, I still, I have a Google home and the, um, from your dinner, I mean, you're going away lunch. I still have that picture. Yeah, I remember that photo. My Google home. So, you know, um, you know, it was one of those things that was great, but man, um, you know, you, when did you decide that sports was the route? Because you said, you know, your parents into medicine. You wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> so do. when did you say, okay, well, I'm going to go into the sports side? Uh, I mean, I always loved sports growing up. Um, I, you know, I, I love baseball. I love football, um, basketball, too. Um, the other sports, you know, that I, I, I liked, but those those are the three main ones that stood out to me. Um I don't really think I realized that I wanted to like go into sports or cover sports until probably I was about like 15 or 16. I think um, I, I knew I, I think I decided that I wanted to do journalism and I figured, you know, if I can't go to college and play a sport or make it to the professional leagues, I might as well do like the next best thing, which is like to be close as close as possible to them and cover them. Um, so um, went to a couple of journalism camps, um, one at American University um, called DWC. Uh, was just discover the world of communications and I did the Medill Cherubs program in 2016 um, at Northwestern and that's kind of how I learned about Northwestern because I'd never heard of it until, <laughs> until that program um, but yeah that, that's that's how I decided probably when I was like 15 or 16 um, you know in, in school you know I, I, I was you know you know I was a good, good student but nothing really stood out to me in terms of, like I want to do this when I get older um, but then journalism I kind of worked at the the school paper and just you know kind of kind of enjoyed it I just enjoyed writing like giving my own opinion on on sports I wasn't a good writer back then trust me but you know it, it was it was a it was a stepping stone for what was to come so um so yeah I think when I was probably 15 or 16. yeah man that's that's awesome now that's still early though because you know some people say they don't know what they want to do until they get to college you know and maybe the first couple of years is trying to find themselves. But I think, you know, that's really impressive that, you know, 15, 16, you know, okay, I want to do this, you know? So I think that's really impressive. Yeah, and but, you know, and when I got to college, you know, I don't, I don't think I was ready for college writing or, or, or the paper. I came to college, and like, I want to do journalism, but also I'm not going to, like, pigeonhole myself into one thing and force myself to like it if I don't like it. Um, I, had this, <laughs> I had this running joke with my, uh, my, one of my best friends, Marissa, and it was, it was the the newspaper's open house Northwestern, the Daily Northwestern. They had an open house. Um, it was in September, 
And she was super excited to go. She was like, I'm ready to get started. I want to work for the opinion desk, walk right in, walk right to the back. And I was like terrified. I, I wanted no parts of it. I was like, I'm not ready for this. Like, you know, I, my high school paper, we didn't really interview people. It was like, you just gave your opinion. There was no real journalism happening, which is like, you know, it was, it was, it was good learning, but it wasn't like I was actually, you know, interviewing somebody. Um, I walked to the sports desk and had a conversation with the sports editor for like 30 seconds. And then he walked away for a second. And I like sprinted out the newsroom and never came, didn't come, didn't come back for like five months. I was like terrified. Um, and, you know, just wasn't ready. You know, that makes sense. I knew I wanted to do it, but I just wasn't ready at that time. I needed more experience and more opportunities in the classroom. Um, but, you know, once I, once I came back, I think it was like February of that, of my freshman year, I kind of, you know, took off. I, you know, I haven't really looked back since. Are you planning a huge celebration? And perhaps you need some balloons to make your event look nice. Well, I have the perfect place for you. And that's Symphony of Balloons. Symphony of Balloons will do all events, including baby showers, weddings, birthday parties, or that special anniversary. Contact them today at 410-802-1531 or email them at symphonyofballoons at gmail.com and tell them Brian H. Water sent you. Yeah, man. So when did you, like, what was it that got, like you said, you took off and never came back for five months. What was the moment that you realized, okay, I'm, I'm ready, I'm pumped up to do this? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it was a similar thing, you know, kind of with, you know, with the internship with y'all, it was like, you know, like I gotta, I gotta put my, step outside my comfort zone, just try something, you know, get myself into the, if this is what I want to do. Like I'm at the place to do it. You know what I mean? I just kind of have to like, um, put my mind to it and just believe that I can do it. I think imposter syndrome is very real for, for, um, for everybody at some point in their lives. And I think at some point in their life, and I think everybody has it, especially when they're going to a new environment, a new situation. I think I definitely had that early on, but, um, you know, once I saw that first article go up, I kind of realized that I could do it and, you know, kind of got over that hump. But, um, I, I think it was just a matter of believing, you know, believing in myself and telling myself that I could do it. And I had a bunch of friends who were super supportive too. Um, and they were also all working there, you know, from like, you know, October on. So I was like, I don't want to miss out on hanging out with them anymore. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go and get started. So that's kind of what got me back. Yeah. So now, you know, you at, um, Northwestern, man, what is it like being in that Everston, Chicago area, especially for college, you know, especially growing up in the Baltimore area, like going to a different city. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it, it was unique. I definitely wanted my college experience to be in a place that wasn't in Maryland. You know, I, I think I would have gone to Maryland if I hadn't gotten to Northwestern. But um, I thought it was a good chance for me to kind of be independent on my own. You know how close I had to my parents and how, you know, we really do everything together. And they're really protective of me and like really, you know, really appreciate that. But I think I really needed the opportunity to kind of grow by myself, learn, th learn things, good, good or bad, you know, like, you know, you know, learn all the mistakes and that sort of thing. But Chicago is great. You know, Northwestern is about 30 minutes outside of Chicago. It's not really in Chicago. I think, you know, people from Northwestern will be like, yeah, we're, you know, we go to school in Chicago and people from Chicago are like, no, you don't. Like, you go to, <laughs> like, like, like it's, 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 it's the equivalent of like, of like um, you know, I live in Baltimore County and like, you mm -hmm. know, but it's not Baltimore. It's, it's the same. It's the equivalent. It's like the same okay. thing. You know, it's like Evanston's like 30 minutes away. It's like, um, it's kind of like a suburb, but yeah, no, I, I love being close to Chicago. I wish I had taken advantage of it more. Mm -hmm. uh, I told myself I was going to senior year, but then of course, you know, the pandemic happens. It's like, you know, you can't really go out as much, but um, you know, I, it's, it's a great, it's a great city to be in. There's so many things to do, so many places to see. Um, and I, I love my experience there. Um, and being that close to Chicago. Yeah. Now real quick, let's touch on a little bit. Um, when you came to Johns Hopkins, you know, um, yeah. you, 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 was, you go from writing sports, obviously now you're writing about medicine. How did you find your niche in that? Because, you know, it's, it's something totally different from writing something you're interested in to something that's important, but you're like, uh, okay, whatever. It's not <laughs> on your radar if you're not in it. So how did you, you know, really like once you kind of say, OK, I'm here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. How did you find a way to get comfortable out of your comfort zone? Ask as many questions as possible, uh, you know, whether that was, you know, asking uh, Vanessa McMains or asking uh, or asking um, Marin or Audrey or you. Um, and literally anybody on that team, like, you know, just like, hey, like, what should I focus on? Like what? What are the most important things to get at? Um, I think that was the. I think that was the biggest thing. Just kind of 
just learning from other people, like what makes a good story um, about medicines. I just didn't know that. So then once I got that baseline, I'm just kind of sticking to the basics, not trying to do anything too crazy. Just like, again, tell the story, what's most important and learn as much information as you can as possible. Um, and then the, th the third thing I think is being okay with, with editing and, 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 and people moving stuff around. Like that's, like that's the only way you're going to get better as a writer is to have great editors who are going to, you know, be honest about it. Like, you know, like this, this is what's going to make this better. And then taking those edits and not only just seeing it in the, in that story, but then making sure the next story you're applying what you learned from the previous thing and kind of moving forward, you know, so getting better with each story um, was really important for me. So I think, you know, I think I ended up writing like four or five press releases, I think, but it was like, the first one was like, probably not my best but then you know by the fifth when I had you know taken you know I got one step better I think with each story um and was able to like apply that if that makes sense oh wow so now what was it like going home to your parents and now you know you're in their field did they have like high expectations that were they getting on you like this better be right you know yeah I mean I mean, I mean yeah they, they, they were they were you know, I would talk about something. I'm, I'm working on a story on this. And, you know, typically, you know, we're at the dinner table. It's like mom and dad, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, all these words, all these four <laughs> words to me that I don't even understand. Like, you know what I mean? Like things yep. that I come home. I was like, oh, I learned about this today or that. They're like, oh, like, you know, it's so like there was the three of us having a conversation. It was like the first time I really felt like I kind of understood. I mean, I, 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 you know, I've been in meetings before, but it was the first time I was like, oh my God, like, these words actually might make sense to me. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, oh, like I might actually understand what this means. So um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they definitely had high expectations. They, they wanted me to have fun and learn as much mm -hmm. as possible. So um, it was definitely funny coming home and like, you know, again, they would say stuff that I'd be like, wait, I think I, I think I heard that in the meeting today. I think I might actually know what that means. And then, you know, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was definitely fun. You know, I mean, that, that's the closest I'll probably ever get to medicine, but you know, for, for, for those 10 weeks, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah now, Cause I think, yeah, that sounds like really cool. Now you, um, I was about to say, well, shout out to your dad, too. You know, I never got a chance to meet him, but obviously I heard great things, not just from you, but just from around, you know, the um, the circuit, you know, so shout out to him, yeah. um, you know, as a wonderful too. doctor, but I can see even better father because of the young man that you've turned out to be, um, yeah. you know, but what was it like, oh, man, I don't know why I just forgot. Like, I had a question and... <laughs> It just slips out. Yeah, but well, you know, let's move on. Um, you know, so like you said, you now you're at the dinner table, you kind of understand things. Oh, did you find yourself at a time like now stuff that's considered jargon isn't jargon to you now because of being in that field? Oh, there's still a lot of jargon. There's 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 plenty of jargon that I still do not understand. Um, <laughs> but it's like you you know, you know, my, my dad. The one, the, one, the one thing my dad was great at, uh, he's, he's a pediatrician, um, associate professor of, you know, pediatrics at Hopkins. So um, I think as a, you know, as a teacher, he does a really good job of simplifying things, if mm -hmm. that makes sense, or making it easier for someone to understand. Um, so I, you know, I think from a pretty young age, there were certain terms that like, you know, I think I actually understood more than I, than a, you know, average, you know, you know, 10 year old or 14 year old I understood because my dad was able to simplify it. Um, and, and make it make sense. And, and you know, it, it is fascinating to hear about what he does, you know, taking care of, you know, premature babies in the NICU. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I couldn't do it, but like, you know, to, to, to see, especially to see, you know, my dad's a, a big dude, you know, six, five, you know, you know, big dude, to take, you know, to have to see him like hold a baby, like a small baby in his hands, like a pretty cool feel is a pretty cool thing to see for me, especially being like a young kid. I, I mean, obviously I don't remember it was like, you know, for him to hold me, but to see him hold, you know, a small baby like that and take care of it, like, that that's that's a pretty surreal feeling and to just see him passionate about what he does um is, is pretty cool yeah that's awesome now have you had to report on sports injuries since and if so did your work in medicine give you a better opportunity i don't know if you got a chance to do a lot in orthopedics but because you have this medical background now did it help you like reporting on sports injuries yeah i mean i, I mean i i think I, th I think with sports, it's very easy to like, you know, to see somebody get injured in the field and try to figure out what, um, you know, try to be a doctor yourself. I'm like, oh, I think it's this, I think it's that. And I think what, one thing it's taught me is like, make sure you have your facts right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, don't don't try to be a doctor until somebody actually says what it is. Because I, I, I think the one thing I learned is I'm still not an expert in medicine and I don't think any sports journalist really is. So I think making sure that you're being correct and accurate with um with your analysis and your and you know, your your thoughts i think is really important and um i think that 
it also has taught me to do more research, you know, to figure out, you know, how long a player is injured, you know, what this means long term significantly. So I think it's maybe think more in more detail and more thought about how important it is um, to know what you're talking about when it comes to injuries in medicine. Oh, OK. Now, yeah. you also you went on. Um, I know 2020 was a, a rough year for all of us, but, you know, life deals you lemons, you make lemonade and yeah. you landed an internship at the Kansas City Star, you know, and. That was also a time when, um, well, actually, let's back up first. You got through the Sports Journalism Institute. Yeah. Which I yeah. thought, like, so I marked out, as we say in wrestling. Um, I'm not sure if you know what the term mark out means, but that means you get, like, really excited and you go into fanboy or fangirl mode. So <laughs> <laughs> when you text me about it, I marked out because I remember being at uh, NABJ, and that was the first time I heard about the uh, SJ, SJI. And... When I heard them talking about it and I saw like they had this whole presentation at one of the um, like one of the uh, mixers and I saw it, I was like, wow, this is a pretty cool program. Like, you know, I wish I was younger if I would have went on to more of the writing instead of in the production route. This is something I would want to be a part of. So to see that you have made it and got accepted, man. Like I said, I marked out and, you know, I remember when the announcement came out, just seeing. So, you know, I'm tagging our whole co-worker shout out to Archie shout out to <laughs> Rachel um we, we shouted out Vanessa and everybody else I was like look <laughs> look what Andrew just did um can you just talk about that program and then how that helped you get to Kansas City yeah that 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 that, pro, that program has, has, has changed my life <laughs> like it, it, it really has um you know shout out to to Greg and Sandy and Leon and David Squires um that 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 camp um just just get, just opened up so many opportunities um to learn from journalists who've already done it and been in it for a long time just like you know tips and advice they have for how to be the best um and you know how to, how to push yourself and um they they also did not have a lot of time to turn that you know from a you know, they turned it from you know in person experience to a virtual experience like two months and we still had all these guest speakers come in we had, you know, game stories. We, we, we covered previous games that maybe we didn't know about in the past and to write stories on deadline, which is something that I'm, you know, using now in my past couple of internships. And um, also just, 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 just the network that that, that program has created for me. Um, the, the, the people in my program, um, you know, in my class, I still keep in touch with to this day. Um, and, you know, some of them become my really good friends. I'm just super grateful for that program. Um, but it, it, it taught me a lot about how to be a better journalist and, you know, you know, from the various advice and tips we got, but it also gave me a network that I think I'm gonna really appreciate going forward. Um, I can't tell you like, you know, they, they really call themselves a family, but they really mean it. Like, you know, people keep in touch. Greg always reaches out, you know, Leon saying, telling us to send us their work. Um, and Squires does the same thing. So I, I'm super grateful for that program. And it, it, it really did change me moving forward. Yeah, man. And, and that's one of the things that I think you hit on this key is the uh, networking aspect. Um, because you never know. So for instance, right before this, uh, call, um, everybody knows, now I, I ain't gonna put that on here. <laughs> I was gonna talk about it, but you know, just networking in general, um, you know, it's key because you, you just never know. Like I remember when I was at ESPN, they would say, the person who was training us would say, I might have to work with you one day. And you right. think about it, like you're training me, but it's possible. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, now, you was also with Kansas City, man. Um, so I got to put this out there. You might have been the good luck charm because before this, they couldn't get over the hump. They go win the Super Bowl. So uh, we need to somehow get you in Baltimore. <laughs> um, that way our Ravens can win. <laughs> I know. I know, man. We, look, we, we need to get one. We need to get one. <laughs> yeah, now, you did get a chance to interview the, uh, the second best quarterback in the league, right? <laughs> I did. Yeah, well... I wouldn't say interview. I was on the press con. I was on the, the Zoom press conference with him, and I, I think I was just so in shock. There was Patrick Mahomes on the screen. I didn't uh -huh. actually ask a question. Okay, uh, but yeah, but it, but Talk it was about cool. that though. Talk about these Zoom. How you know you you just getting started. So now you um, you know you you've gotten used to going to you know with Northwestern covering you know high profile teams. You got used to that media scrum going to those media conferences. Can you talk about how things shifted, how you, you, you're getting a, used to one skill, now you have to change your whole skill set doing these Zoom conferences? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely weird because you would think that, like, a lot of these things, it's also harder to connect with players when you're over a, when you're over a screen. Like, it's just, it's just like the, the, the natural back and forth, the follow-up questions, those sort of things don't necessarily happen over Zoom. It's kind of hard oh. to... Um, 
it's kind of hard to kind of get into a flow and feel like you're really building a connection with these people, mm-hmm. um, especially for, you know, as an intern, when you only have like 10 weeks, it really is even harder to kind of build, you know, a connection with, with people. Um, so I think, I think what it's taught me or, you know, being over Zoom, what it's taught me is the ability to find stories outside of the Zoom call where like you can kind of get to know people like, you know, that might provide unique perspective that you can't get on a Zoom call. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never really had the opportunity to be in a professional locker room. I think college, there is more access just because, of, you know, like it's, it's college teams, but professionals, you know, I've, I've heard from a lot of journalists who I've talked to that like, it's, it's just not the same, you know, being over Zoom and the access isn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I never ha- really had that to begin with. So I, I think that might actually put me in an advantage, I guess, a little bit because I've, I've been trying to make sure that I found unique ways to tell stories and um, think outside of the box of who I'm speaking to or who I'm talking with um, that, you know, maybe, you know, that, that I might already be used to because I haven't had that access in that same way in college. Yeah, it's funny because I've never been in a college locker room. I've been in a pro, a pro locker room. Um, and it's uh, a lot of times, you know, they, I mean, they're big kids, <laughs> you know, yeah. you see, Manny Machado walking up, looking at a TV, and there's the Rays and the Red Sox playing. And he said, man, look at these, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> redacted, uh, <laughs> you know, so. Um, but it's, yes. it's, it's, it's funny because in college, you know, we didn't get into locker rooms. It was all like you only go to the press conference you're on the podium. So it's like, I just so like. You know, I think a lot of the, the professional journalists I talk to are used to just being able to go in the locker room, and just talk mm-hmm. to them, to kind of chat it up. Like even if it's not even like you're t- asking questions, you're just catching up with them. Like we never even had that, so it's like you know, it it, it is interesting to just, you know to watch uh, and pick pick you know you know professional journalists' brains about how they're kind of working now and how they're trying to find unique stories now, mm-hmm. uh, because it's something that I'm definitely taking notes on and kind of using for myself as I've you know kind of grown in that space. Yeah. Now one of the things. Um... You're a sports writer, but also you studied uh, African American studies when you was in college, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. and, I, and I know you've told a lot of phenomenal stories as black personalities in sports, or black coaches, or you know, people of color have you know broken through glass ceilings. No pun intended. Well, all puns intended. Um, <laughs> you know. Can you talk about how you've been able to use that influence and tie it into sports and tell these unique stories and what made you so passionate about doing this? Yeah, um, that, well, I, I think long term, what I want to do is look at the intersection of race, gender, sexuality, and you know all different identities, you know, religion, all that kind of stuff, all these different identities and how they have an, aspect, an effect on the sports world, either positively or negatively. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, it's negatively, so, you know, more often than not, unfortunately, and just in terms of, you know, there's a lot of discrimination in America and sports is no different. Um, or sport, it, there's racism in the whole world, not just America, unfortunately, and sports is no different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that I wanted to use the African-American studies background where I kind of learned about um, how society is structured to kind of, I think there's definitely a lot of comparisons and similarities in sports. Um, I wanted to make sure that I'm using my platform to kind of bring to light some of these stories that aren't talked about or that's um, you know, you and I both love baseball, but like the Negro Leagues have not been adequately covered over the years. And, you know, their stats have kind of been left out a lot and, you know, their history has been forgotten. So, you know, any opportunity that I had to kind of bring those stories to light is important. Um, it was a really great story by Kevin Blackstone um, for the Washington Post. And um, everybody's talking about Shohei Otani being this two-way player. He's getting compared to Babe Ruth. But there are a lot of Negro League players that were two-way players that aren't getting discussed in the same way. So I think those stories are super important to tell. And those are stories that I want to tell and continue to tell um, throughout my career. Um, So I think that there's a lot of those things that aren't being told. And that doesn't just go for, you know, for for Black athletes, you know, as well. I mean, in baseball, there's people from all over the world um too and you know and you know there, there's there's racism in their country but that's the Dominican Republic or you know you know in, in you know there are players at the all-star game with you know SOS Cuba written on their hats because obviously you know there, there's a lot of things going down in Cuba right now um so just making sure that you know they're, they're cognizant of those stories and you know realizing this that you know these people are athletes but they also have opinions you know that are you know more than just athletics yeah man and I think that's a phenomenal job that you're doing because it gives us these um these opportunities to learn, you know, yeah. and it creates the lanes for those uncomfortable conversations so that ultimately we can make everybody comfortable in this world. So, you know, man, I, I just want to give you your props on that, you know, keep pushing. Um, now, when you, you're at the Washington Post, you know, how's that been so far? 
it's it's been great. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, they 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 really they threw me, they threw me right into the fire, and I I really appreciated that. Um, I, they they have been everybody has been super supportive and reaching out to me. You know, even the remote studies, like hey, like we've had intern chats. Um, you know, every week where we get to know somebody new, and you know, just kind of you know talk to them. And I really appreciated that, but they really given me the opportunity to do everything so far. I, I really can't complain. I've had the chance to cover golf, which is something that I knew nothing about coming in, but kind of had a newfound appreciation for. Um, I got to cover baseball, which has been really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had the opportunity to kind of write some profiles and some features already. I got to write on Trey Mancini. So I got to go to, you know, Camden Yards. I know that so was cool. you about to be an Orioles fan. Well, no, you know, I mean, you know, you know, my, you, you know, my heart's always with the Braves, but you know, you know look, 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 I, if the Orioles make a run, you know, look, the Braves in the NL, the Orioles in the AL, so I'll always support the Orioles if they make it to the World Series, as long as they're not playing the Braves, I'll be cheering for them. So um, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I don't know. With, with the way the Braves are, even with the way the Braves are playing right now, I don't know if that's going to happen. But I want to take a quick minute to talk about mental health. As you all know, We are living in unprecedented times, whether it's the racial pandemic or the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, I want to introduce you to Hope Again Counseling Services, where transformation begins. Hope Again provides help for children, adolescents, adults, family, and couples. So give them a call at 410-698-8442. Or visit them on the web at yourhopeagain.com to book your appointment. If you are willing to believe, you will begin to achieve and ultimately Hope Again Counseling and Services can help you receive all that is meant for you. It's been great. And I've, the, editing, the editing has been great because not only have I been getting edits, um, yeah, obviously I want every internship to be an opportunity to, for me to learn and grow. So with these edits, it's not only like I'm not only getting the edits, but I'm learning why they're giving me the edits and why they rearranged it this way and making me rethink about, um, you know, why they're doing the things they're doing. And I've really appreciated that feedback um, from all my editors because I think I've grown a lot already in these five weeks. And, you know, I have five more. So I'm hoping that I can um, continue to grow and learn more over these next couple of weeks. That That's important, too. You know, um, you know, I, I gave Leo Brady a shout out earlier. When, you know, when you came on and you, you know, was with us while we was doing in case you missed it, a lot of times in the early stages, Leo, every time he told me straight up, like, I'm always going to have something to say, you know, as he's somebody who's been a true vet in the game and he would explain, hey, well, do this shot because you want to do you want to capture this or make sure you next time light this way so you can capture that. So I think that's right. important. Um, You know, we're recording this on a Thursday and. It was, you know, this past Saturday, um, there was an unfortunate accident, uh, incident at, you know, Washington at the Nationals Park. And you were there, you know, um, man, like, you know, all right, scary for all of us, obviously, uh, who, you know, shout out to Rob Parker. I had just had lunch with him earlier that day. He was in town. And, yeah. you know, I saw his tweet, then I'm looking and I'm like, oh, snap, Andrew was there. And, you know, it's, it's crazy that we look for social, look to social media a lot of time to check on our loved ones um, when things like that happen. Um, but can you just like, you know, if you don't mind, just kind of talk about, you know, what happened and how you had to instantly put on your journalism hat. And, you know, this shows that interns are just as important because, I mean, you went viral on Twitter, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Um, so, so, I, so I was in the press box. So I was supposed to be cover, I'm covering that covered the Nationals yesterday and on Tuesday. So I was supposed to be shadowing the Nats writer on set on Saturday to you know see how he you know how he goes through his process. And shout out to, to Jesse uh, Doherty. He's really great. Um, and he he was he was he's he's been great so far and giving me advice and keeping me up to date and you know showing me how it's done. Um, but yeah, we were there. It was it was the end of the sixth inning. I want to say, and it was like um, we. It was crazy from the press box was on the fourth floor. We, like, we, we heard we heard the gunshots loud and clear. Mm-hmm. And I kind of looked at Jesse. I was like, that's kind of that was, you know, I, 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 I'm from the suburbs. So I, I know a good firework, man. I was like, I, I know what fireworks. Sounds <laughs> I, was, like. I, I was getting ready to say that you from Baltimore. But yeah, in, in the suburbs, I think you have to <laughs> distinguish. Right. Because. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look, you, 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 you know, people, you know, people in the suburbs like, oh, my God, is that gunshot? You like, know, like that was definitely fireworks. But this mm-hmm. I was like, no, that definitely was a gunshot. Like, well, like, we I, have like, a game here in Baltimore yeah. called gunshots and fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I was like, no, I'm pretty positive that was a gunshot. But like, it was the end of the inning. 
So people were going up the stairs. And again, I'm, I'm watching the view from the top, from, like, you know, from, the, from the press box. So like I'm watching people walk up the stairs. And then all of a sudden, I hear like a couple of screams and people just start sprinting back down the stairs, like running people over, like people are falling and hiding under chairs. I'm like, yo, like what is, like, what is going on? And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, I, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it'd be so hard to get a gun into a stadium. You, you know what I mean? Like that's, it's just, yeah. you know, it's the protocol, but like the way people were reacting that like, we thought there was like a gun in the stadium. So that's on the left side. Uh, down the third baseline and then we look on the the right field or the first baseline and people are sprinting towards the center of the field and going and hiding behind chairs too or you know hiding in the bleachers so i was like oh my god like, you know like, there's there's like really a shooter here i thought there were like two shooters like one on each side like i really had no clue so we kind of got under the the desk in the press box um and i guess somebody was trying to lock the press box door but i kind of thought someone was like banging or like trying to get in it's like no no nobody had any clue what was going on mm-hmm. um at, at, at the time and then you know they finally announced fortunately they were like yeah the, the you know the shooting was outside the stadium um but then i kind of felt bad for all the people who had sprinted out of the stadium when they thought there were gunshots in the stadium and people like sprinted out but it's like now all the people who sprinted out were in danger um but you know once everything was okay you know, Jesse kind of started, you know, just writing, you know, what he knew about the situation, kind of what he saw, what he observed. And I was kind of like, do you want me to go interview fans? Because I was like, I mean, like, I, I mean, I figure, I mean, I mean, everybody had to stay in the stadium. So I was like, I figure, you know, some people are down there. We might as well just walk, I might as well walk down there and talk to people and get their experience, of, you know, their perspective. And it was nerve wracking for sure. I never had to do that, especially on you know, something like that was so, you know, it could have been so tragic and people are still trying to recover. I mean, I personally was trying to recover still. I mean, my, I mean, my heart was racing and all that. Um, but, you know, I was able to walk up to people, you know, this this one, you know, this one couple who was willing to speak to me and then ended up talking to the three or four fans that night about their perspective and their experience. So it was a great learning experience for me, just, you know, the ability to kind of relax and kind of stay cool, you know, when something like that happens and just trying to get the interviews and, you know, do your job. And I was just trying to help Jesse out. I'm glad I could. Um, but definitely, you know, a terrifying situation. But I'm just glad everybody's safe. The bottom, bottom line, I'm just glad that nobody was, you know, nobody inside was harmed. I, mean, I know there were some people outside who were harmed, um, mm-hmm. but fortunately, that nobody, you know, you know, no, nobody died or anything. It's so like that, that, you know, that's 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 a blessing within itself. But you know, just just a scary situation. Yeah, um, I was. I had just came home, and it's funny because I was driving back home, and I remember thinking, man. The Padres are in town, you know, you know how it is in baseball. There's always the hot team or the, yeah. the box office team. And this year you could make an argument that the Padres are definitely one of them um, yeah. because we've never seen, you know, I mean, we've seen teams like this, but like, yeah, the Giants are in first place out there and the Dodgers, but the Padres got the swag, you know, with Tatis Jr. I'm obviously, it might not be I popular know. to say in Baltimore, but I'm still a Machado fan. I understand yeah. why he left. So, you know, they, and I was thinking, I was like, man, and I had left BlurCon. So I was like, if it wasn't for BlurCon, I kind of wish, wish I went to that game. So I just, you know, went home. And, you know, my I was out all day. So my kids, they wanted to watch Space Jam and they wanted to wait for me. So I was like, I told the wife, yeah, let's let's let them stay up and we'll watch it. So as soon as like Space Jam goes off, you know, I'm all right, I'm gonna pick up my phone. I'm like, oh snap, what just happened? And yeah. I'm looking and then I see your tweet. So then, you know, that's when I text you and I was like, well, right, you know, I know he'd get back to me, whatever. And then I woke up, and I saw, you know, you have responded. But man, like I said, scary times, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, and, and shout out to, you know, you talk about the swag of Machado and Tatis and, you know, they, 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 they could be like, you know, big name guys only care about themselves. But they literally brought fans onto the field and into the dugout. I mean, they brought their families, but then they, they, op- like, they literally opened the gate and just brought fans into the dugout to keep them safe. And like, that's like. I mean, it was it was the two of them, and then Will Myers and Jerix and Profar. I mean, they, I mean, they're MLB players. They don't have to do that, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It, you know, it was it was a great effort from them, you know, a courageous effort from them to do that. Um, it's something they didn't have to do. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's 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 really good to see that there are good people, especially athletes. You know, um, yeah. what's the ultimate goal? Like, I know you said eventually you want to tell those stories, but like, what's another goal you have as you know you um you continue to push forward? Yeah, I, I, I just, I just want to make sure that, 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 that I'm, I'm being a voice for the, you know, for, you know, for people of color in sports and for women in sports and that sort of thing and make sure that I can, I can tell their stories in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's my goal. And then, and then also, you know, making more opportunities for black journalists in, in sports, I, I think is super important. Uh, you know, I, I think diversity in sports, in sports journalism that has to improve. Um, I want to make sure that I'm 
a part in continue, making sure that, that continues. Obviously, you know, Greg and the SGI program, is, you know, is, is a great way to kind of increase journalism and diversity or diversity in sports journalism. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to continue to kind of keep that going and, and keep the torch, you know, carry the torch, you know, per se. And that, that that's that's a personal goal of mine that has nothing to do with my writing specifically, but I think it's extremely important because I think um, it's only going to inspire more generations after me to continue to, you know, be sports journalists and know that it's possible to do it if they see people like me um, so being successful, that I think that'll encourage more people to moving forward to do the same. Man, that's awesome, man. You know, um, like I said, you, you've been doing a phenomenal job, you know, for whether it's in sports, medicine, um, a podcast. And are you bringing a podcast back anytime soon? I know you've been busy. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm actually going to see Kenny in a couple minutes. Um, Shout out to we, Kenny. Tell him I said, what's up, man? I will, I will. But um, yeah, Kenny, uh, Kenny and I, we had a podcast that was going well, but you know, we, we both got busy with school and internships and all that kind of stuff but you know i think it's definitely something we want to continue doing you know when we have the opportunity it might be a thing we don't do you know all the time but you know just to check in once a month i think it's something we can get into the habit of doing hopefully again once we have a schedule but you know kenny's about to graduate uh this fall he's about to graduate early so shout out to kenny again yeah Um, yeah um, uh, yeah hopefully we can get the podcast going uh again because we had we had a lot of fun even if you got to create a schedule and if it's just like you said, just once a month where you do something and then hold it down uh, until you have a plethora of people that you could call on um, to be, you know, a special guest. You know what I mean? Look, yeah. wrestling Rome is 10 years old, but it was a time from 2000 when I started to break it down with Brian H podcast. So in 2018, up until this year where I was just doing stuff by myself and, you know, Dwayne would get in where he could fit in. Because, you know, we just had stuff going on. And now, you know, we got our weekly podcast. So if anybody understands, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, you, you could definitely make it happen. Like I said, you definitely um, just watching you over the course, you know, go from just writing to, you know, on air talent. And even some of the stuff we ain't touched on too much, but like the video stuff you was doing in Northwestern, you know, being able to watch your growth, man. It's been fun to watch. And it really helps, you know, people like the, you know, the vets in the group really see that the business is in good hands. You always want to make sure any line of work is better than what you found it. You know what I mean? And to see all the stuff that you're doing, you put on well, man, you put on well for the city, um, the state, <laughs> the, yeah. the the culture, man. So yeah, keep it up. And also, you know, I know this is about this podcast. It's supposed to be about me, but also none of this is possible without you being a great <laughs> mentor and, and support system for me. You know, I know we don't like, you know, talk every single day, but whenever we do, you're always checking on me, always looking out for me, making sure that, you know, I'm staying on the right track. I can't say how much I appreciate your support these past two years. And, you know, I'm, I, again, there was there was the one year delay where, you know, we probably should have met a year earlier. About that. <laughs> we <Three. met> with, <laughs> you know, again, sorry, my mom again. But, yeah, no, I'm so super blessed to have so, you. So l- l- I'm going to tell the story. Uh, it was my <laughs> first my first boot camp. I'm, I'm two months in. Right. And, and we mentioned Patrick earlier. Patrick was just like when we first met we just clicked. Right. And then, so Patrick is like my historian on the low. I go to him about that whole old history about baseball and sports and he'll bring it up. Shout out to him because he even wrote a book too. And Mm -hmm. so your mom was somebody he worked closely with. So he comes to me and he introduced me to your mom at that first boot camp. And she goes, my son wants to do sports journalism. He's 16. I said, I said, okay, here's a card. You know, tell, tell him I said, and this is when I was uh, doing the thing with Fox Sports 1340. So I didn't even have Hopkins business cards. So she's like, all right, I'm gonna let him know. So I'm just waiting and, you know, <laughs> no wait. So then, so here's the funny part. So when you and I meet, you know, they said, we got a new intern, Andrew Golden. All right, cool. I was like, all right, let me go introduce myself. So we talk. I'm like, all right, he cool. He likes sports, whatever, whatever. I said, all right, bro, I'm gonna add you on Facebook. I type it in Facebook and then I see you and your mom and your dad. I said, wait a minute. This is Dr. Golden's son. (laughs) So I was like, I go back over there, everybody. I'm like, so you're Dr. Golden's son. So Andrew, as humble as he can be. Yeah. You know, I just don't want to be walking around like I'm just Dr. Golden's son. Like I'm (laughs) going to earn my stripes around here. Look, 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 I, I guess the story is, is, is the real version, but I really, I never remember getting this business card. My mom swear <laughs> gave it to me. I do not remember it. Um, I, and, you know, I, I, I'm gonna try to deny it for as long as I can, but I guess, <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm being outnumbered here, but, um, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm glad we met at some point. But yeah, yeah I guess I'm, I, yeah, I'm seen, you, you know, I got to be there with networking, man. You know, you know. <laughs> well, it, you know, you, you have, you've done a great job, though. Like I said, you know, just seeing your network increase, man, because like I said, you never know. Uh, I may be in a situation, hey, Andrew, uh, can can I get a job with you? Can I work with you? <laughs> you, you, you just never know. So, um, but, you know, like I said, I'm proud of you. Um, last question. The title of the show is called Breaking Through the Glass Ceiling. So when did Andrew Golden break through the glass ceiling? He realized, man, I'm pretty good at this. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm living in my purpose. I don't think I, 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 I think I, I'm 21, and, but, but I feel like I have a lot more to go and a lot more to accomplish. I don't think I'm where I want to be yet. Um, you but know, you obviously, I, 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 you're trying to be humble, but there had to have been a point where you knew you was in the right track, like where you knew, okay, Writing is for me. Journalism is for me. I, I think the I think why I knew journalism was was um, was it for me was I, I wrote my first long long form story on black coaching at, at Northwestern in the NCAA. Um, that was one that I put a lot of time and effort into, and I was you know I kind of realized I was like if if I put my mind to this and this is something I really want to do that I, like there's nothing that I, that I can't accomplish. Um, so I, I, I guess that would be, you know, my, 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 my breaking the glass ceiling per se, probably that, probably that story. Um, but like I said, I, I don't think I'm anywhere near where I want to be. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm motivated to, you know, to be the best version of myself and keep going. Man, that's awesome. Like I told you, man, I'm super proud of you. Um, I know the best is you still got, um, more things coming, uh, but, you know, I just wanted to take this time out, you know, to give you your uh, flowers now because, you know, you're doing a phenomenal job, you know, from the Washington Post, the Johns Hopkins, the Kansas City Star, Sports Journalism Institute, the list goes on and on. And even creating your own way lane with your podcast, which is something that's important. Um, you know, I, I just think, you know, you're an inspiration and don't take that for granted. Like there's another generation of kids at Northwestern that's looking up to you. They see, and you know, your name is on board with the others of the world. And so I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, man. And uh, yeah, look, looking forward to uh, hear, hearing this is published and hearing the rest of the podcast moving forward. So I'm looking forward to it. Appreciate it. Let the people know where they can find you. Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter at Andrew C. Golden. Um, that's, that's probably my journalism that, that's where you can find me. I mean, I mean, I mean, if you want to find me on Instagram, um, at AC Golden, but you know, I'm not posting any journalism stuff on there to be honest. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure y'all follow Andrew. Uh, like I said, just a phenomenal young man, and I'm excited to see where his journey. Andrew, appreciate you coming on, bro. I appreciate you having me, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is my conversation with Andrew Golden. Really hope you enjoyed this conversation. Hope you enjoyed this interview. He's someone who is a true example of stepping out of your comfort zone and how it can benefit you. So make sure y'all give him a follow. As always, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Go ahead, you know, drop me a five-star rating. Help me out on apple podcast you know it helps you climb up in the ranks especially with this one with personal journals and stories uh, make sure that you subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com slash b waters productions and share it with the link with anybody and everybody that you feel can be inspired so thank you for doing that this podcast is brought to you by b waters productions you can give me a follow at brian h waters or b waters productions on instagram and the music is provided by Hypno Beats. So long, everyone.